from the GitHub link below and then you come to this file pubspec.yml and make sure that you have this dependencies we are using some of the dependencies because we are in one, we want to use we want to build a great app and we need some plugins make sure you have all these plugins as well as uh, the latest version of this at least the same version of chui and video player uh, on the github link you might not have the this version but if you don't have this version just go ahead and uh, write this version down and run git get pop like that okay so that's what i will do and but actually it's updated on my site so it won't do anything much here and after that we'll run our flutter app because it comes with the default setup and everything so let's go ahead and run it we'll run flutter run d chrome okay so now it will boot up our browser and uh, it might take a bit of time as it's taking time so let's go ahead with the project structure and uh, take a bit of look so in the project folder you will have this uh, lib folder and then we have you will have these three folders inside it and uh, then api screens and widgets so i have done pretty much all the coding but some of the coding as we go ahead and learn how to do that okay all right so make sure we have the, everything is there and this would be our starting page actually this is the main page from here we call our home page okay all right and uh, once you start the app you'll see a default code like this okay so that's all we have right now okay all right so if you have this one uh it means you're doing great and you are following along with me all right so let me walk you through what's happening here this thing over here so we have this container and within container actually we are displaying an image this is the image okay so this is the container and we have given it a, a certain size and width okay well now the width might change as the screen size changes so that's why we have this screen size over here let's see uh, over here okay so whatever the screen it is we are using 60% of the size for displaying this image so pretty much more than 60% is this this height all right okay so what we could do we could change the height right now and we'll see the image changes so now we want to use 85% of this screen size as a height okay now it might come down somewhere here okay so just hit R over here and it will update the code immediately okay as you see that it took bigger size so with the sized box we can maintain the size of the image as well well there are many different ways to maintain image size all right okay but we can also do it using um sized box so this would be more like our hero image okay now let's uh, put it back to 65 percent and uh, now hit r and it would come back to the original position okay so next we'll see how to write our website title over here uh, to show the website title and the navigation bar over here we need to use a property of scaffold that's called app bar so we'll use that one app bar and app bar takes a few, few at least one of the two widgets one is app bar itself or we can also use preferred widget okay well with preferred widget which is called preferred size you can have your own customized widget or app bar or bar over here okay so for now we'll use preferred size and in future when we make it responsive we'll switch back to app bar widget okay for now we'll be using this one all right okay now it takes a property so the first property is once again is called preferred size it just simply takes the size size of this uh, uh, bar which is width and height so for our case we'll use uh, screen width okay so we'll say screen size dot width is the screen width and then we'll use the height so in general for website we have pretty much 70 as height and then we also use child okay and as a child we'll use top bar content uh, within it will pass a variable which is called passity now you may ask what is this okay well this is a file 
the file is written over here or class dart class or dart widget however you understand it okay so this is called tab bar content and which takes a property which is called opacity or there's an argument which is double okay and now once again preferred size takes at least two parameters one is the preferred size the size of the bar itself and then the child well child could be anything but now child is the thing that is responsible for uh, drawing designing and showing content okay so that's what it does all right so now go ahead and take a look at this file and now this opposite thing is it's like when we in future we'll scroll our website up and down and as we up and go up and down our top bar would be more visible as we go down scroll like this of course for now we can scroll we can't scroll it but in future we'll be able to scroll it and once we scroll it as we go down our app bar this bar would be more and more visible otherwise it would be a bit like uh, transparent but not completely transparent okay now go ahead and take a look at this file but before we take a look at this file actually we might we, we may do more interesting thing what we could do we could hit r and see something more interesting perfect so as you see we hit r and now over here we have this uh, website title this is more like title and this is a menu button and which is already working as you can see you can hover over on it all right okay well of course this is not the best locking we need to design it more but now you get the idea now go ahead and let's take a look at this file um, this is a pretty simple file and it has some uh, it is a list actually this list is responsible for hovering over on the menu item like this one okay well now we have eight values here because I'm planning to put four menu items over here so that's why eight and each menu item like this one will have two variables to control the hovering thing like as you hover over as you see hover over you see an underline things like that so they're controlled using these variables and we'll talk a bit later about this now go ahead and take a look at this thing obviously it is again preferred size this one and what I guess that I don't need to we don't need to have this preferred size anymore because we already have it over here right we're also returning preferred size so I guess we don't need to do this any anymore over here so let's go ahead and fix the bottom part we could do remove it and put a, a semicolon over here so let's run it again make sure everything is working correctly yes so everything is working correctly all right okay now go ahead and understand a bit of it so definitely we are using a bit of padding so everywhere bottom uh, top bottom left right okay and then because we want to put everything in a row so definitely this is a row right so let me resize this so that we can see it better yeah like this yeah so everything would be in a row so that's why we wrap everything around a row but also we want to take as much space as possible from the left and right side so we are taking all the space and you might ask then why I have this empty space over here that's because within the expanded widget we are using a sized box so to create the distance like this distance is like one-fourth of the whole screen right so this is the one-fourth of the whole screen this is the second fourth third fourth and the fourth fourth okay so what we could do we could go ahead and change this one a bit of it and run hit R and we'll see that now it's taking half of the space of the whole width okay so the shorter it is over here the shorter it is the closer it to the left side okay now of course you might not want it but if you don't want it let's see what happens so it would be at the very left okay so that's how you create pretty much your own position of that uh, content of the uh, top bar I would say all right now let's put it back so sized box is pretty useful okay now this is the text which is responsible for this one so showing this author this big title over here okay, let's run it one more time and uh, we don't want actually 50% of the width we want like 40% all right okay so let's hit R and it would be here okay now it's working fine and we have this some basic style and then once again we have this um, 
ink width, uh, sorry, sized box. So this is like this distance, like one fiftieth of the whole screen. Okay, so this is the pretty much distance, and this is this distance we'll use in future to draw more uh, distance or show more distance uh, between the content or the menus. Okay. All right, and now we have this inkwell. In general, inkwell is not necessary, but as because we are hovering over on the content, so that's why we need inkwell. So, like for example, uh, as you can see over here, inkwell takes few properties. The first one is hover over, and definitely if you want to tap on this, so that's why on tap, and then you have the child. And now child could take anything. In our case, we are using column because we want to show the text and hover over this black underline on the top of each other. So that's why we are wrapping everything within column. If you didn't have this underline over here, we wouldn't need this column widget, just we can directly write here text widget, okay? Yes, and then once again, we have this text style over here and hover over has a different color based on how you hover okay but of course right now i'm using the same color uh, so in future soon we'll see as we hover over we'll have different colors for example now we are hovering over if hovering over is it true then we use this color if it's not true then we use a different color so like for example so, well now because we have the same color so whenever we hover over it we see the same color because hovering over not hovering over is the same color but now for example we can change the color over here this is cc so we'll see a different color if we are not hovering over so if we are hovering over we'll see this color so let's go ahead and save it and run it all right so now hovering over as a default is false so that's why it comes back to falls back to this color and this otherwise we show this color okay so you get the basic idea that how it works okay so but anyway for now i'll put it back to the same color and the feature will change the color all right okay now let's hit uh and it comes back to the same color now we have this sized box distance that's because as you hover over you have this black line over here as you see okay that's why we have this sized box and this black line is shown based on based on your hovering effect otherwise so whenever you hover over on it it becomes like it becomes like true and then the visibility widget shows whatever you want to show okay so that's what we are showing so what we are showing we are showing a container the container is a height of 2 and width of 20 so this is the black line we are showing and that's only true when we hover over on it so this becomes a true all right and this is once again coming from at the top because we saw early that we have inkwell so inkwell keeps track of this variable so when you move the mouse over onto them so it sets them to true otherwise it's immediately sets back to false okay so hopefully you understand so it's keeping track of this variable and changing the state is happening within inkwell on hover function or on hover property it doesn't matter how you understand and as you also see that we wrapped it around set state function so what happens when you uh, hover over on it the state changes immediately and it becomes either true or false okay based on that so hopefully it makes sense so now while we see that if it's true then we show it in this condition otherwise we don't show this underline which we saw early okay hopefully it makes sense to you now we want to have a lot more menu buttons over here so what do you do we would go ahead and just copy the whole inkwell and put it few more times not just whole inkwell with the size box property together okay so what i do i would just copy paste them four times all right so all together we have four times i guess all right so now what do we do with hit r all right now we'll have a big change over here as you see so we have four menus the first thing we want to do we want to change the names right so let's go ahead and do it so uh first inkwell the second one over here the second menu we'll call it about and the third one we'll call it uh, history and the last one 
we might call it say contact all right now hit R let's see oh so we are missing one of this one so yeah I changed the name of the first one what we could do we can just uh, copy paste cut and paste over here at the beginning and we should be good to go I guess over here actually and definitely we don't need this sized box now let's go ahead and run it and see the result and we have a bit of problem so that's because uh, um, I made a mistake so I shouldn't put it over here I should have put it right over here okay right after the author text so that's where we'll put and now hit R and now everything's looking good and working perfectly okay now the other thing is you see once I hover over on one thing uh, on one menu the whole all of these four menus they're hovering over effect they're having the same effect but they should not have we should only see this black line or underline once we hover over on a certain one so let's go ahead and fix this and this is done from this variable over here all right so as I said earlier, so all of them are false right now. So now based on condition, we need to set them true, okay? Now over here, the first one, if we hover over, so it will get the first value and set it to true or if, it's, if we don't hover over, it will set it to false. So this condition is correct and the same over here, right? Now, we might change the color of this thing because right now it's uh, black which i don't like so we could do colors dot say a little bit of uh, blue i think would, would work better okay so now let's save it okay mm, yeah i like it now as you see for in the first place we change the color so that's why we are seeing the color right okay now let's go ahead and change the color and hover over effect for others one now this is the second one second ink well so which is about now as you see it's referring to the first element of the list and that's why once you hover over on this one you see that one as well and the same is happening for others so all we need to do change the index of this list so this one should be one okay now the same over here on visibility it should be one as well okay now let's go ahead and hit R and we'll see we have we will have a bit of change over here okay of course this two we didn't change so it's affecting others but now this is this one is working correctly perfectly okay now let's go ahead and change it for history okay so this is the history section now over here the index should be two and this one should be two as well and this is two as well and the visibility now the visibility we want to set it back to sorry colors dot blue okay now let's go ahead and change over here this one the index should be three and over here it's the same and uh, over here it should be three now let's go ahead and change the color so we'll call it colors dot blue now let's go ahead and run it now let's try to hover over on our menu looks like uh, we still have a few problem uh, the f second one and the fourth one working correctly but this one and the first one is having a bit of problem so it's definitely the index problem so let's go ahead and check the index and the condition from the beginning so this is the first index zero zero one uh zero zero okay so this is the f this is for the first one and again zero for the uh, underline and the second one is okay yes here we are having a bit of error and here it's correct this should be the third index third index is two 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 and over here once again we missed that part and this should be the fourth index and fourth index should be three 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 
and the three now let's hit R and perfect okay yes as you see now you hover over a certain um, menu and uh, they are working correctly okay all right now next we will uh, change this color over here this is a black one so let's go ahead and change it so it is the second one so this color okay hit R all right perfect it's working so the miss most important thing over here is inkwell so using inkwell we can keep track of our on hover effect and to do that we need to set certain variables we are using the same variable but in a list which is called is hover and we are setting a different index based on the number of inkwell we are using so for the first inkwell of course the um, index is zero and for the second in, uh, inkwell the index is one and it's it's go like that and then we are using a column property or column widget to show the menu name and the underline okay and underline is showed in within visibility widget and which checks if is hovering is it true or false so hopefully it makes sense to you the next thing we'll see this this black thing over here so we don't want to have the black color so what do we want that this should and this 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 top top bar and this image they should overlap onto each other so we can fix that easily so we're, we need to come back to widget over uh, our file home page over here and uh, here there is a property which is called extend body behavior and we'll set it to true okay now we'll hit r now perfect so as you see now our image came up so far up to the top and now over here the image went up so now it looks much better so using this you can put your uh, app bar uh, to the uh, top the toppest position okay now we'll see how to create floating point access bar over here some buttons some beautiful buttons let's go ahead and do that well now to do that we'll just go ahead first call a function or class that we already have it's called floating point access bar uh, it takes a parameter and parameter is the screen size and once again the parameter is uh, the screen size parameter is coming from here all right now what we'll do we'll go ahead and run it and we'll hit r okay all right and uh, of course nothing is there because there should not be anything well now let's go ahead and find it find the, this file this is the file over here okay now let's take a quick look at this one all right so let me tell you what's happening here well now we, we have this uh, items names over here uh, in a list okay and we also have hovering over effect and we have a list uh, which takes a widget type elements and uh, over down here we have generate row elements okay and it is responsible for generating widgets using inkwell okay and uh, at the same time there is hover over effect and a text style and at the same time another widget that we create using sized box to have vertical divider and then we save it in our list which is called row elements all right and then from here we have this basic setup for in the build method to show it but definitely as you can see the main child of this build method is a container and which is empty so that's why when we run it we don't see anything so what do we do we'll go ahead and first to change it change it to a card element because we want to show everything in a long card over here okay so that's why we are doing it and after that we'll change it we'll change it to uh, elevation so we'll assign elevation 5 okay so now let's go ahead and see if we can we are able to see something okay well still nothing is there because it needs child elements and things like that so for now we'll have child and child would be padding okay and uh, say we want to assign padding to it so we'll use edge insets only and we'll assign top um, top padding so how to do that we can call 
this dot widget dot screen size dot height and whatever the height it is of the screen the whole screen whatever the height of this whole screen we take 1 50th of it and make sure that this way we are whatever the size of the screen we take that size and divide it by 50 so we are we, we, we have this uniform top so it's same on every device okay now we'll have this bottom this dot widget dot screen size dot height by 50 okay and now you may care that where is this coming from this uh, screen size as I showed you early that screen size is uh, an uh, parameter that's being passed from home page and from here okay so that's what we are taking now let's come back to coding now of course uh, padding itself takes uh, child so in our case the child would be row because we want to show things in a row so let's go ahead and do it so we'll say child row and uh, <clears throat> let's see uh, okay sorry it should be out of it not inside okay over here right and now within it row takes the children so we'll assign children and we'll assign a widget function to it okay I'll, I'll talk about it soon again okay now let's go ahead and hit run and yes so that's what actually we were trying to achieve just now i mean pretty much like this but not exactly it's a little bit ugly okay so this is our card over here and this card has elevation five which we saw early and we have this top and bottom padding based on this okay and then we have this function to generate elements and these are the elements okay now i'll talk a bit more about it soon so but first uh, let's uh, uh design it a little bit over here so now we can call it property which is called main axis so main axis alignment space evenly so there'd be even space between these four elements okay so go ahead and hit run r and we should be good to go okay now it looks much better okay yeah now let's fix this hovering over effect it, it looks a bit ugly okay that's because it's coming from inkwell over here so this is a splash color which is a transparent and we have hover over color so let's set hover over color to transparent as well and now hit r and let's see okay now as you see uh, the ugly looking is gone and now it's responding to a uh, color change as we hover over on them all right okay now let me let me walk you through this function which is called generate row elements and this is creating elements or children for us as we know that row takes children okay so now this is a function which returns a list of widgets and those widgets are children okay now let's take a look at this one so this is the function so this function has the first a statement which is called row elements that clear because this function is being called from build method as you see it's inside build method so every time uh, your app has some change it clears the rows and start to recompute everything and now we are using inside inkwell but before that we have to also know that item length because we have four items here so based on four items we use uh, we generate four child or children actually and they are wrapped inside inkwell because we want to use hover over effect okay and it takes some basics property so you can change them and play around and once again they have this on hover effect because that's what we want to do when we hover over and at the same time uh, we are also setting whether is hovering true or false if it's true then we set the value to true otherwise we set the value to false okay and based on that element over here we change the color of the text because once we hover over on it so we have a uh, almost a black color or blue gray uh, sorry I think this one so when hover over effect is uh, hover over is true then we show the blue uh, dark blue otherwise it's the blue gray okay and now what is the sized box the sized box is actually showing this element over here okay this vertical line okay and as you can see from here it's a vertical divider this is another widget built in flutter itself so you just call it and assign it width and color thickness and you'd be good to go so everything runs in a loop over here four times so it creates four children and after creating four children we each time we create a children or child 
we add it in our list which is called row elements okay and at the end we return it and once we return it it is returned as a widget as you can see from here so as it's returned as a widget we can use it over here because we know that children takes uh, widgets okay so that's the um, uh, that's all about this floating point access bar so next we'll see how to put our feature title here and text over here well now as we want to show uh, text over here big text and uh, and the short text over here we need to do the coding so let's go ahead and uh, call another dart file which is called featured uh, heading this one and uh, let's go ahead and save it and run it see the result all right now we run it we see that this is up there well it is supposed to sh we are supposed to say this thing over here so to do that we can wrap this two around a column widget so that they're on the top of each other like this would be on the top of this this line so let's uh, what we could do we could write over here a column widget and the column text children and now within children we can move this two together okay and let's go ahead and hit R all right perfect so now it's working perfectly as we expected but now let's go ahead and take a look at this file what is this file so this file is uh, in your project folder this is called a featured heading this one and it would be a pretty simple straightforward file so all it does is pretty much uh, takes a padding to create a bit of distance from over here to this line I guess and then all it does is show that this text this is featured text and the font size and the color so the color is a bit different though so we want to change it to this color to do that we can go to our floating access bar uh, this one or sorry not this one we can come over here top bar content and copy the color and change the color there and hit R okay now it looks like the same color our main color or the theme color okay and then we have this expanded widget and we didn't it to have text widget to wrap around text so the main two widgets are text and uh, this expanded widget because they're in a row so we'll see them horizontally right and um, because to create a bit of distance so we have used this one using a uh, expanded widget so it takes all the available space which also means that it pushes this expanded it pushes everything at the corner at the end so there is a lot of empty space over here all right so that's about this uh, expanded widget i mean sorry the featured uh, headings which we did just now over here okay and next we'll do feature tiles within feature tiles we'll show images uh, right below the featured heading so we'll called feature tiles all right and uh, let's go ahead and run it and see the result all right so oh, here we are but we have this uh, bottom overflowed by pixels because it's not scrollable as it is not sc scrollable so this part down there it can't take empty space and it messed up with the layout so we can easily get rid of this problem to do that all we need to do we need to wrap this column within single child scroll view widget okay and then within the, if we use that one we'd be able to scroll it okay so what do we do if you're on Mac you can hit control enter and you'll be popped up with this one so just wrap it around the widget and change the widget name we'll call it single child scroll view this one okay so if you wrap your column within single child scroll view in general you'd be able to scroll them and then this error would be gone okay so let's go ahead and run it hit R okay now as you see it's gone and we can scroll so our offset is already getting better and better now we are able to scroll it up and down like this okay as you see as we up and down the the, the padding the, the top bar stays fixed or right, everything else is working fine now let's go ahead and take a look at this file featured tiles so what is this one okay so this file uh, is I would say over here featured tiles 
Now if you open feature tiles, it will be pretty long. And it has some, for now, some unnecessary code. So what do we do? would uh, comment them out so to comment them out let's find a uh, space over here place so from top to this place so we'll comment them out we don't need them for now and uh, we can collapse it okay so all we need is this part of the code okay and that's what is showing this uh, images over here now as you see that our images are laid first in row and then in each row we have this column so because we have this column because to show this image and the image type like this is sci-fi this is photography and this is romance like that okay so first row and then it's in a column so as you see over here of course we have a bit of padding though because uh, to get rid of the too much right or too much left thing so we don't want to hit our left side and right side so we have this uh, basic padding and once again this ba basic padding is more like uh, it based on your screen height and width so once you try to minimize it as you see it gets uh, smaller and smaller all right and everything stays perfect so far but we can optimize it later in future for now of course we'll get this kind of error but we'll fix them later so the main point is so the okay just now we saw that we can make shrink it or expand it but as you see this distance stays the same okay that's because we have this uh, dynamically calculated top left and right position and this position are all within build method and build method is called when you change something on the screen or some movement happens like this so then build method is called so each time build method is called we get this mm -hmm. dynamic screen height and width okay all right so next one we have this row as we said earlier because we want to put everything in a row and within row we'll have column so that's why we have this column over here and now there's one interesting thing which is called iterable and generator and map so all we are doing we have a list over here so using this list we want to dynamically create widgets because these are all pictures over here these are all different pictures and those three pictures as you can see so using these pictures we want to create widgets because over here in the list they are just a uh, part of the images but they are not widgets so as we want to create dynamically widget so that's why we use iterable dot generate okay so in general if you use iterable and uh, dot generate it means that you're going to do something dynamically okay so in our case we are going to create some widgets three widgets for these three images dynamically and uh, this three dot operator means take all of them all of them what whatever in your uh let's see what is this list so assets whatever in your assets take all of them and go through them so that's what it means take all of them and go through them one by one okay and as you see each time you go through them we create a column so uh because we have uh three items in the list so we'll have three column one two three okay of course this is the first one which index is zero and over here we create a sized box we create a size box to let's see let me shrink it a bit so that we understand what's happening so over here so we create a sized box and size box has a height and width once again this is also dynamic and then we have this container and using this container we want to decorate our image and that's why we have this box decoration and decoration image in general decoration image is within box decoration they work together and within box de decoration image in general you will use asset image to show your image and we also have a bit of sh uh, over here a bit of very light shadow okay i would say because you see the opposite is 0 0.3 okay and then we have this padding because uh, between the image and the text we want to have a bit of padding and then we have showed this we have showed this uh, a text and this text is the text down there hopefully it makes sense okay so the core part of this uh, featured uh, tiles dart file is that we have created a sized box and 
uh, because we have three items in our asset list so that's why we are calling the column three times based on the length and each time we create widget and the widget is within sized box and which takes a uh, container and uh, padding and a text like that hopefully it makes sense so, now okay we'll see uh, how to put a text a big text right under this uh, om images below down there big text and to do that what we'll do we'll go to our main home homepage file and here we'll call uh, class which is called main heading and we'll hit R to run it right and now we'd be able to see it okay so this is the color and this is the heading over here this is the heading and let's see the file itself so this is the file main heading file and it's a very basic file all we did we passed the screen from home page over here and we also set some basic padding so this uh, one tenth of the whole height of this screen okay and a uh, bottom padding so that's why we have a little bit space down there and the text itself okay so that's very pretty simple and if you don't have this color like this you can change it to this color okay well next we'll see how to put a big carousel slider down there okay right below this heading and it's again pretty simple let's go to our file uh, which is main main home page and right below it we'll call another class which is called carousel uh, U S E L carousel let's see all right i think the file is called main slider main carousel this one that's it now let's hit r okay so now we should have a carousel looks like it didn't restart it so let's restart it yes now as you see we have a carousel slider over here and right now the whole home page the website is looking good and here we have this carousel slider it slides automatically and uh, we can also tap through them uh, so now let's go ahead and look at the file that what it does okay so the file is over here carousel this one okay and uh, I'll enlarge the editor so that we understand what's going on okay the first we have this hovering over thing so once you hover over this thing so it takes effect like this okay you see as it changes color so that's why we have this and it's selected when you tap on it like that and we have this list of images like showing this images over here this images uh, each image they also have a name on the slider like this is Australia Sydney so we write here Australia like this is Asia I believe it's in China so and this is Africa all right uh, that's what we have and the first thing we did here we built a function which is called uh, uh, generate image tiles so we have these images but they are just list of images they are not widget so we generated seven widget using this function over here so we are going through this list over here using the map function and then we have clipped our rack because as you can see we have a little bit of border over here and then we put this uh, image all right so each element in this uh, function is the image path okay as we are looping through it we generate uh, we get each element and each element take holds the path of this list over here hopefully it makes sense uh, okay uh, by the way I have a dedicated tutorial how to create carousel so I'll put the link below so you can go ahead and check it out exactly the same uh, carousel but I have explained it a lot more detail over there so you'd understand it more so we created this uh, list of widgets using this clip rack and we saved them in uh, where this image is itself again all right okay and then we return it okay now we'll look at this build method of course we have the screen size and we also get a variable from this generate image tiles the function up there we saw now it'll hold all these widgets over here and uh, the first thing we have used that we are returning a stack because we want to put this uh, image and image names and these things uh, in an overlapping manner so they want to overlap onto each other so that's why we are returning a stack all right we know it that if we return a stack we can overlap things and first thing we use inside it this um, 
carousel slider widget as you can see this is coming from the plugin this is the plugin you have installed at the beginning of this tutorial and it takes few items or a few parameters the first one is items uh, items keeps the hold of all these uh, images or image widgets that we generated and then we have to set up this basic option over here and this are pretty simple so what we could do you can go ahead and play with them for example there is auto play so you can turn it off and restore it now autoplay should be gone because i found autoplay was a bit annoying just now now it's gone right so it's very static and well one thing i want to mention though like this header will fix it so the header should have a background color when you scroll down but it doesn't have background color now but soon we'll fix this header and its background anyway so now this is the thing and of course you can play around this aspect ratio and if you want to build a desktop app and if you want your image to occupy the whole screen so you sh your aspect ratio should have little over two like this is little over two and uh, you can also turn it down uh, turn it off and you'll see that it, its position is different all right so now it didn't occupy the whole screen it has uh, on the both side we have these images all right yeah of course this still works on the touch so it's up to you how you play around this thing so you can go ahead and play around uh, this uh, parameters there are a lot more parameters on it so if you hover over on it so you'll find uh, those parameters and you can go ahead and play with that and now in general we don't need to set up this thing inside set function uh, set state but because we are going to click on them and we are also hovering over so that's why we have this one for example you can also turn it off you don't need this thing so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this thing completely and see the result okay now hit R okay now let's go ahead and sit down there okay now if you click on it you see so this hovering over effect this one doesn't work uh, because this set state function is doing that okay now let's put it back okay so what it does is that it's uh, as every time the slider changes the index is changed as the index is changed is saved in a variable called current and we have declared this variable at the top I believe somewhere here yes right so it saves it okay and then it goes through all the sliders and checked which one is being clicked and based on that it also do a match if it matches then we say is selected true if it's selected true it moves this slider down there I mean this this uh, uh, this line over here to the next one or the one you clicked so that's how it works now once again check out my tutorial for this uh, slider carousel slider I uh, have a dedicated tutorial it would make more sense and you have to pass another uh, parameter which is called carousel controller and this controller variable once again coming from uh, carousel controller plugin itself okay and uh, a few other things though, like this one we, what we could do uh, anyway let's put this back and large true for now I'll put autoplay false because it was being a little um, annoying that uh, it's autoplayed okay now what we could do we could turn this off we, okay and let's run it and see the result so we'll see that we only have this uh, sliders okay we only have the sliders but no text on it so that means those two things were responsible for doing it just now we saw that if we turn off these two functions over here what do we see just a slider and using this you can uh, scroll left and right okay now we'll see the next one so uh, what do we do we'll uncomment them all right and now we'll see we'll have two functions and we'll comment out the last one okay and now let's go ahead and run it and see the result okay it's restarting all right so now we have this text over here on the slider as you see so this uh, function or this class which is called aspect ratio is responsible for showing this one the text over here and uh, now this is a default function or a widget or class in uh, flatter so we don't need to worry about it all you need to do uh, understand it and pass some parameters the way it works once again it takes um, aspect ratio and this ratio should be the same as your slider or slider size or image size so that it looks good 
of course you can play a little bit around this and then uh, of course you can pass a child and the child should could be anything but now here we are using center and if you see if we don't use center what happens so let's go ahead and hit R now we'll see that is somewhere over here so all it does is that put in the center of this screen because we have this aspect ratio aspect ratio and the child they work together so if you have aspect ratio and if you have the center widget then what it does based on that aspect ratio it puts things on the center otherwise it doesn't so let's uncomment it all right and once again this part is should be pretty easy because the places is a list we saw early over here and uh, the current this one the current index is current which is coming from up there so as each time it slides we see it uh, on the image and the correct text because we are keeping the track of this uh, variable using current and passing it to our places list and this is being used in text widget okay so hopefully it makes sense so well it's right there and now we'll take a look at the last widget okay now let's see how this other uh, widget the last widget aspect ratio how it works let's uncomment it out okay and let's hit r and run it it's restarting okay and now hence uh, here we are back again with our uh, original uh, settings or the code and it's working perfectly and the few things we need to take care of over here once again the aspect ratio okay you can also once again play around with this whatever the size you think where it should be but uh, if you just look at it directly like this you might be misconfused the aspect ratio is pretty much earlier like this one why uh, it's so small why it's not as big as this one that's happening because over here within our column property we have this main axis size let's uh, uh, comment it out and hit R okay so now let's check it out so over here we see that it's taking still taking uh, as the original aspect ratio 18 by 8 or 17 by 8 but because of this property because of this property Main, main size mean what it does it shrink down to the smallest size possible of the children or child in our case what is the child the actual child is this text okay so this text we know that's a tiny very tiny so because of this property what it does it shrink it down to this size um, it's like the height okay and then uses that one otherwise it should take the whole property if you or whole height if you don't use this one okay so hopefully it makes sense okay and so let's uh, save it and hit r again hit r okay so it's back there and another property you need to take a look is this one like center widget because we are using center so you might think that uh why is at the bottom because we are at the same time we are using align bottom center okay so it was supposed to be at the center but now we align it the bottom so all it does is horizontal center at uh, the I guess the vertical center vertical center uh, nullifies and it just keeps the horizontal center I mean one of the properties instead of in the middle it just put in the bottom but center like that okay left and right center okay so th this is what is happening because of this one so let's comment it out and uh, save it and let's see the result so you'll see that originally it is in the center but now it is center but we are pushing it back to the bottom using this property okay now let's hit r and it should be down there okay all right and a few other things that we need to know over here like we are using card widget so this is the card as you can see this is more like a card and also we set a bit of uh top and uh, bottom uh, padding like top and bottom but they're very tiny as you can see 150 th and then because we want to sh uh, put a lot of text like this or how does this uh, you can tap on them it's more like indicator so we are using a row property and within row we once again we have this column because we want to put this text and this underline together okay so that's why we are using column because within column we have this text over here and at the same time we have this visibility and within visibility we have this container and this container is actually responsible for showing this um, 
bar over here okay so that's why we have this uh, column and as you can see within column we are also using inquire one more time because we want to be able to tap on them okay because we are tapping on them so we need inquire inquire more like works as a link pretty much like that and um, what else uh, so the, the inquire property is pretty much the earlier I explained at the beginning of this tutorial and few other things we need to take care of the over here is like on tab okay as you see we are using a loop over here we are going through a loop and we are creating five columns because I think or six columns I would say the length is six and um, now we have this index over here uh, now you need to know that this column is pretty much more like over here this for loop for loop is pretty much over here like um, this one okay uh, creating dynamically creating uh, widgets so in our case we are not using images in this case we are just using text so we have this for loop and within it we are keeping track of this index i and once someone click on that so this i is being passed to the controller okay so and then we jump back to that one like this okay like this so we jump back so we can verify it but for example let's go ahead and put a log somewhere uh, log over here okay so let's put a log debug log debug print and then we'll do index dot to string because uh, it takes a uh, string debug print itself uh, if you just put uh, integer it doesn't work okay so now let's go ahead and run it okay and now over here Let's try to click on this so like this is the index 0 this should be the index 2 right so what it does it will print over here index 2 okay now now you can come back to the very first one like we clicked on 0 so so whatever you click it passes that index to the controller uh, inside this carousel and I mean first it pass it to the controller and then carousel I think the constructor or initializer takes it and put it back over here this index okay pretty much like that and then it goes through the loop as it goes through the loop then it does some of the settings like it finds whichever index is being clicked for that index we set is selected true okay and then we go to that one it's, it works like this okay so hopefully this is pretty much it and now here animated opacity instead of this one you can just go ahead this section but because we want to do a little bit of animation when this slider shows up you will see that there is a bit of delay so that's why we are using animated opacity otherwise you could be just good to go with container over here all right and with this we are done with this uh slider carousel slider once again i have a dedicated tutorial on this if you want to understand more check out the link below next we'll see how to fix our uh, this uh, top bar over here so we want to give it a background color right now it doesn't have any background color as you can see okay okay now we'll see how to fix this uh, opacity problem of this top bar or header okay so like if you scroll down the header should have a background color but it doesn't have okay so we want to put a bar a header or background header and based on scrolling the opacity should change okay let's go ahead and do it and now in our app we have already done the basic work of this so this is our home page okay over here we have declared this scroll controller because we want to change the opacity of this bar so that's why actually we have already declared it and we also have this uh, uh, but using this actually we can control the scrolling so the first thing because we want to do the scrolling okay and later on with opacity we will use it together and of course we have the scroll position and opacity and in the init method we have this add listener this one okay it's called scroll listener we pass a listener to it and what does it do it listens to the scrolling and scrolling position okay it listens to the scrolling and scrolling position so as you scroll through it up and down so it gets the position in pixel values and save it to this variable which is called scroll position okay and that's what this listener does and this listener is being called from init state 
And so do remember that every controller, scroll controller, every scroll controller has a listener, okay? So you can pass a listener to it and do whatever you like. And because we want to update the state or the scroll position immediately and store it in a variable, so we put it in a state set state function because we want to we want this value to be available immediately and uh, help us with the rendering immediately. That's the reason we put it in set state. All right, and later on, of course, we have this uh, value, which is opacity over here. So at the beginning, as we saw, the opacity is zero, right? But now, as soon as you start to scroll, this opacity is not zero. Why not? Because this condition is true. Because when you start to scroll, what will happen that this becomes greater than this one okay well even if you don't scroll it's still greater than this one but what happens when you start to scroll when you start to scroll it is still greater than this one and then we fall back to this condition okay and this condition has a value between 0 and 1 like that okay somewhere between 0 and 1 so we get certain position as opacity like say for example 0 0.4 so if you get 0 0.4 our top bar this bar header section would be a bit transparent but not completely but when it's zero then it's completely transparent that means we can see the background behind this top bar right okay well now in certain position when you keep scrolling skip scroll down and down and down like this in that case this scroll position becomes bigger than the screen height because do remember screen height is fixed like this okay but when you scroll more the scroll position total pixel value has gone up and down or gone up is bigger than bigger than this so this would be the total pixel which is greater than this in that case we'll have complete transparency uh, sorry completely opaque or in this case the background would not be visible behind this okay now you might ask well we already have this thing right and we are passing to our function which is called top bar widget but in your case it could be any function anywhere you want to want just pass this value and the place later on where you want to use it uh, use that one in the color together because you'll have a certain color and color should have opacity because if you want to deal with opacity and pass it there in our case we are passing it to a control a container and container has a color okay it could be anything for you but in our case we have used container and so there is a container over here so this container is uh, like say the width is pretty much the width of this whole screen over here and the height should be like around say 70 so these are container right we are passing it to it but now let's hit r and we'll see that it doesn't work i mean this is still transparent right as we are scrolling up and down it's still transparent it's not working why not because over here child single child scroll view do remember that it takes a controller what controller it takes a scroll controller so we need to pass the scroll controller to it so once you pass the scroll controller to it the scrolling position takes effect so at that moment we can get the value in pixels and once you get the value in pixels this position is not zero anymore otherwise it would be always zero if you don't pass this value so if it's always zero of course it's always transparent the background right so now because we already passed it the scroll controller so we can get the position the opacity is not zero anymore so we should be able to see that there is a bit of background or background color okay so let's hit r and see the result okay all right now scroll down yes we are getting color as you see now the background is not transparent anymore it is a white color okay so let's let's get a bigger look greater look all right okay so now this is after applying opacity okay hopefully you learned something now here we are with our website and it's looking much better it looks like a complete single page website okay now we want to put a footer at the bottom okay to do that let's go ahead to our code well this is our home page code so if you organize it like me like this collapsing and uncollapsing they would look much better okay so now here right below main carousel so this is the main carousel below it we want to put our bottom so we'll call a file that we already created it's called bottom bar 
Now this file once again should be in your GitHub source code, the one I provided at the beginning of this course. Okay, now you hit R and uh, let's reload our website. Okay, now let's go down and you'll see there is this beautiful footer. But of course, uh, there are a lot, of, a lot more things to be done with this. Now the first thing is too close to this slider and uh, these things, okay? So we don't want to make it so close. So we can put a distance over here. So now, so we can put a screen height, okay? So one tenth of the screen height of the distance from the bottom to this slider, okay? So this is one tenth of the screen height. So let's hit R, reload it and see the result. Okay, now it's looking much better. Uh, well, now let's take a look at this file bottom bar. So this is our bottom bar. I guess we don't need this one. We can close this. Okay, so this is our bottom bar. And now if you come to bottom bar, so we have a container and within container, we have a bit of decoration uh, for container itself. So I think there is also some unnecessary code. This box shadow, uh, you can completely remove that if you want. Okay, uh, I guess it's no useful here. Uh, it would still be the same if you remove it. Okay, it's still the same. So let's remove that part. We already did it. Now, uh, we did a box decoration over here uh, so that we can use this gradient color over here. So as you can see, the bottom bar, bottom or footer has this gradient color. The color changed slowly so that it matches with our theme color and some of the pictures color as you can see okay so in general with box decoration you just use one color okay like uh, for example uh, what we could do we can just uh, say completely uh, turn this off okay uh, <clears throat> we can use a color and say colors dot say blue this one okay now or let's reload it <clears throat> all we will see is a blue color right but i wanted to have a bit of uh, different thing or different deck style so uh, i didn't want to use blue or single solid color so here we have this linear gradient okay and if you have a linear gradient you need to also mention your beginning color uh, well this is the certain range of course you can also start from zero the look would be a bit different uh, let me hot reload it okay and this is the end color so which it reaches at the topmost level of the color okay um, this is also stops how it should blend in so these are the different parameters you can play with okay all right and with this uh, I guess um, it just takes some extra care of not overflowing of the colors I guess not overflowing of the colors with this uh, tile mode clamp okay well, most important part is these two colors, beginning and end colors, where we already defined early, okay, at the top. And uh, you also need to tell them where to begin and where to end. Anyway, now we'll see this uh, column section. Okay, this is the most important section, apart from the color. Now, this is this footer has been divided into column, okay. Well, now, this in column will have children. So, this is the first child, this box, and this divider is the second child and this part is the last child okay all right now let's go ahead and see in the code so you see this is a row so here this section is more like a row because we have as you can see this thing so in a row arranged and then we have the divider the white color divider which is this one okay and as well as the text now the uh, of course we have a bit of sized box to create this distance over here okay this is the sized box that's what we're doing and then at the end we have this text over here copyright text now one important thing though about this divider you see the divider is not taking the complete width that's because we have a padding now that padding is happening because of this container okay because the container if you set it to zero now let's hit reload r now you'll see the divider is taking the complete uh, width, but I think that doesn't look good. So we'll put it back, whatever the result, whatever the number was there. Okay, now hit reload. Ah, now let's take a look at this row section. 
now this row section is pretty amazing uh, for now we have three elements over here this this and this okay so this one is the bottom bar column which is about contact us and heading and then this uh, container of a white color which is this one actually and this is the about section we saw and uh, now this is another child in our row but this child is a column for showing this information but as you can see they're on the top of each other so we wrapped them around in a column widget okay as you can see from here all right so email address uh, and uh, things like that okay yeah and uh, of course uh, let's see what else uh, we I think we also have a widget which is called info text okay so let's take a look info text this is the widget okay so this widget is showing this information okay all right uh, but now we'll back focus back to this one uh, this section over here which is called bottom bar column now here we have this uh, total four information as you can see heading s1 s1 s2 s3 but uh, we just see heading section which is called about as you can see from here okay but we are not seeing them okay that why if uh, to know we need to ha ha go ahead and see this uh, file which is called bottom bar column as, as you can see that we are passing it through the constructor bottom bar column okay so this is the file which is bottom bar column and it takes for uh, arguments that we are passing from this file okay now as you see we are just using the first argument which is a heading and uh, our first argument is heading is about okay so as you can see from here heading so now over here we are only using heading so that's why we see heading and we don't see anything else so if we want to be able to see anything else we need to use this uh, past argument okay which is this three actually okay now we'll what we'll do we'll just copy paste them i guess three times okay now let's hit r now as you see we see these things down there okay uh, of course uh, we could do a little bit styling over here before we do that let, let us change the parameters so this is s1 s2 s3 they're being sent from here s1 s2 s3 right so they're being sent from here so from here we can change them so s1 and we can also change the font size uh, s2 font size is same 14 and uh, s3 font size is 14 once again okay now let's hit r and see the result okay so now as you can see we can see over here that the text are being passed all right okay from here so while uh, now we can partly copy paste this thing and put it down so we can put more show more things over here because right now not much thing and we have a lot of empty space and change some of this so i will just quickly go ahead and do it okay uh let's see well we have help social and there's three new two new items actually one is help and there's social so we can hit r yes so here we are because we have more empty space so it posted over there just now this divider was here because we have these things okay so but of course in future we'll see how to make them clickable but not right away okay so now with this we are done with the pc version or the mobile version of our dex uh, this website okay well, the most important thing is this homepage file over here. We have scaffold and body section and uh, within scaffold, we have this app bar, which we saw at the very early. And most important part is this single child scroll view. We use this one because we want to be able to scroll the content of column. OK, if you want to scroll the content of column, you need to use a single child scroll view. Otherwise, you won't be able to scroll. 
and of course you have to pass the scroll control controller as well and then within a column we use a stack widget okay yeah we used stack widget and uh, within stack widget we have this container which is showing this background image okay all right and after that uh, we had this uh, column so now because they are stack widget so they are this container and column is also they should overlap on each other because they're all on stack widget but now if you go ahead and see the first child floating point access bar it has a lot of padding from the top so that's why it's not overlapping if the padding is gone it would overlap okay and then we see the column now once you put things inside column they don't work as stack anymore okay so within column they work like tr normal or classic flat widgets like where they always sit on the top of each other so in our case only this two widgets this one and this one they are overlapping but now things inside column they are not overlapping on each other they are following the normal flow of web development or flutter web development okay so once again just uh, this container and column are overlapping but the in things inside column they will not they, they lose the previous property and they act normally okay so hopefully you learn something now this is our uh, website everything is fine perfectly working okay but if you scale it down or shrink its width as you see so there is this problem as well as these things are not hiding because right now this is more like a mobile device of course you can shrink it more i guess somehow uh, but anyway so uh well now if we do go ahead and try this inspect thing and uh, use this one okay so this is for mobile device okay now we are over here so now it's more like a mobile device right because as you can see it's responsive I can change it to say for example iPhone X all right so now it's more like a mobile device anyway but it, it's too slow though so small though so I can adjust it so anyway so on mobile device this is uh, this should be hidden right and this error should be gone as well but now the problem is first thing we need to check the device size to do that we can put a condition over here we can check the screen size to check the screen size we can use this property as we have used earlier so what you could do you can just copy paste it and take the property which is width from it and we'll check a, a condition over here we'll do a conditional check we'll see if the width is less than 800 okay because something is less than 800 in general that's a mobile device so that's 800 pixels right okay so now if it is true then we'll show an app bar so this app bar and if it's not true which is in this case would be a desktop browser or desktop screen right so that's what we are doing so if it's less than 800 then we'll show this app bar otherwise we'll show this is preferred size app bar okay now let's go ahead and hit R and you should see that uh those menus are gone and we have this app bar over here and of course you can scroll down but the opacity also has gone don't worry we'll fix them in a minute so now this part is for mobile device app bar right so we can uh, go ahead and work on this section so the first thing we want to do we want to change the background color so we do colors dot white and uh, we can also deal with opacity so very good now you hit R. Now, of course, definitely the color has gone. The opacity is 0 0.5. But now this weird color is happening because of elevation. So default elevation is 5. We can set it to 0. Hit R. And that should be gone. Okay, now here we are after adjusting uh, this elevation. We set it to 0. Now the color is okay. But now the problem is um, uh, this uh, transparency, right? 
so it's still 0 0.5 so what we could do based on scroll position we can use this opacity which we have used early okay so we'll use this one and once again we can hit R and uh, now you see I'm scrolling and the opacity is going away slowly now it's completely opaque okay all right so this is uh, the first thing we have done and the second thing is that we can also set a title for this thing okay now it's totally empty so what do we do we'll set a title for this now this title section actually I'm gonna copy from tab bar directly because we already have one so we can exactly use this one okay we don't need to make a lot of change so for for this title we'll set a text okay all right now it would look much better yes now as you see so this is our title and uh, uh, the opacity also changes as we scroll down now another interesting thing about this is that uh, for it now if I say let's go back to the desktop device so now it's more than 800 so it automatically changed to this menus now if I slowly go back to mobile device you see over here as you can see it was less than little more than 800 so we see that now we do it as soon as it is hit 800 it hides and it shows us this uh, bar at the top right and uh, everything else is working fine so the next thing we want to do we want to show a menu over here now to show the menu uh, what we could do we can use a property in scaffold uh, a scaffold has a property which is called a drawer uh, you'd find it somewhere here like this one so we can use that property which is called drawer and I will We already have a file in our source code that is called menu drawer so if you uh, open it in your project folder you'll see that there is this file called menu drawer this one all right okay so we are going to use this one uh, anyway so what we would do we'll just uh, go ahead and hit R once again okay so now it's reloaded uh, and if you hover over your mouse on it as you see it says open navigation item all right and it does open something right but the first thing we want to take care of the color this hamburger menu type and its color and we can change the color easily in our app bar so here in app bar there is a property called icon theme and um, we can use this constructor called icon theme data and it takes some parameters one of them is color so we'll change the color colors dot say for example we'll use this uh, light blue over here now once again we'll hit R it should reload and it's reloading now as you see so this is the app bar color okay sorry the hamburger menu color so now we can click on this and we click outside of this box it should be gone and then if you enlarge it that's gone as well and if you make it smaller it still should be there okay now we'll take a quick look at this file which is called menu bar uh, menu drawer now as because we are uh, doing a drawer over here so that's why we need to wrap everything around drawer widget okay all right now within this drawer actually things are pretty simple so definitely we wrapped it around uh, uh, container so the container has a color so this is the color we have and we also have a bit of padding so i'm not going to go through that uh, it should be self-explanatory to you so a few important things that because we are putting things in on the top of each other on the top of each other so we wrapped some menus in column widget okay so within it we have this uh, few uh, constructor or widgets so as you can see all right so of course we, we have inqual and within inqual we have this text login so if we open it up you'll see this one but now we want to change this one we can change it to home uh, and then we have this bit of padding to create I guess uh, let's see 
um, this uh, divider okay divider as well as the top padding okay five pixel like as you can see top and bottom top and bottom padding all right okay and then we have this uh, divider which has a thickness of two all right so you can play around this value uh, design as you like okay and then we have another ink oil and it is it says sign up so instead of doing sign up we'll do say about okay and then again we have this padding so this padding is doing the pretty much same as earlier padding so put uh, like say uh, padding at the top and at the bottom top and bottom okay so the others are pretty much same over here but now anyway I'll change the name so this read is okay and uh, over here instead of contact contact us I think that these are all fine so I'm not going to change them all right now let's hit R okay it would reload uh, now as you see these are the things okay and the last one is pretty important the expanded widget which is showing this text over here all right okay so instead of this uh, blue gray color I want to do it white okay a uh, little bit with the, this uh, uh, I think little gray but now here we did expanded uh, because uh, we want this whole widget over here to take occupy the uh, remaining empty space but at the same time we wrapped the text using a line because we want the text to be at the bottom of this whole empty space so this expand is taking all of the space and then because of this alignment property which is bottom center so it is pushing it down over here all right so what we could do we can just uh, say for example comment this section out and uh, run it you'll see what's happening here so let's open it up now as you see it's there so expand is taking all the space but now it's taking all the space as well as putting the child at the top but we want to put the child at the bottom down okay so that's why we use uh, wrap this text or the child using a line widget uh, so that we can put it at the bottom down okay so let's uh, undo it okay hit R okay so everything is fine okay so next we'll see how to collapse this thing in mobile device all right now we'll see how to make this uh access bar more responsible uh, to do that first we need to head over to floating quick access bar this one and just like this uh, other menus or like this one first thing we'll need to do we need to check whether the screen size is less than 800 pixel now so far the main part of this code for this one is this card section okay so while well, this card is actually displaying this information and in fact there is only just one card as you can see so now the basic idea is that once we want to make it responsive we want they sit on the top of each other so I want to design a card but not only one card I want to design four cards so to do that I would run the cards in loop so in a loop it will generate four cards and then uh, it will show like on the top of each other just like you saw in the demo of this uh, tutorial long ago anyway so the first thing we would do is check the screen size so let's go ahead so we'll check widget dot screen size dot width and if it's less than 800 we do something if it's less than 800 we want to do and we want to show cards all right okay so we do card otherwise we'll show this card okay now this card once again is showing this one and now as I said early that I want to show many cards so what I should do I should wrap this around a column widget okay so I'll wrap it around a widget so I'll call it column all right now definitely it will throw an error that's because we need to wrap this card within child right I mean children list like this one okay so is the best way to go ahead but now I want to run this column loop or 
I want to run this card four times in this children. So that means that it will generate four children. So what we could do, we can just call our for loop that call in i equals zero and uh, i less than items dot length and uh, i plus plus. So what it do, it would run the card four times. So it would generate four children and lay them out in column order, okay? Now, once again, this is uh, this one, this items, okay? This four items, right? So item is our list. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing is our card, right? So now, in general, card will have elevation. So we'll do elevation equal four. All right. Now at this moment we can hit R and see what's going on. All right. Now as you see that's gone. Well now there is the there is card actually, but we don't see the card because there's no child within the card, right? So we need to put some child there. So we'd put text uh, text child, and we would go through this list, and uh, we'll send the index. Okay. Now let's hit R. So now here they are laid out as you can see, which I explained earlier. So it generated four cards and four of these items are here listed in column order. But definitely it looks a, a lot ugly. So this is not what we want, but the basic principle is this one, right? Okay, so that's one thing. But now, uh, like in the desktop version, actually, let's see the desktop version. This is our desktop version. So you hover over on them and it changes color, right? Okay, so in desktop version, we have used inkwell widget. So that's what we'd be using here again, inkwell. So what we would do, we'll wrap this uh, text around inkwell. So let's wrap it, wrap it around inkwell widget, okay? Yeah, now of course inkwell takes, uh, I think it should be W, now, this is our ink well, and let's see ink well. Okay, now actually for the desktop version, we have already done ink well, which is this section over here, this part. So the best smart way to go ahead and with that is we copy it directly. Okay, so we don't need to waste our time. So copy it. So pretty much it'll stay the same and uh, let's see what's the error maybe we have one more of this okay yes right somehow i copied one more anyway so now let's go ahead and run it hit r so yes but nothing changed but only the thing changes as hover over effect right so hover over effect is same as desktop so once again this is inkwell inkwell is used for hover over effect and on tap event if you want so it takes a child this is our text child all right so now that's one of the thing but now actually we also want to show an icon in in front of each text okay so how could we do that well to do that we need to wrap inkwell or this one inside a row so in the row we'll have icon and inkwell together okay so we'll hit command and option enter on mac and now the widget will change it to row, but of course uh, it takes children, right? Children list, children. So we'll put it here, all right? Okay, now let's hit R, make sure everything's working fine. Yeah, so now it's in a row property, right? It's in a row widget. So that's why it looks like this. So it's trying to take all the space available and uh, that's why we can put an icon here. Okay, so we'll call icon widget and within it we'll call icons i. Now this icons is a list once again. So let's take a look at this one. This is what we have at the top declared. So there are different icons and it's a list. Okay, so we can go go through them of in a for loop hit r now let's see it yes so the icons are there but now it's too close to each other so we can create a sized box 
and within sized box we'll hit we'll do with here now this with based on screen it'll have a different for example we'll have uh, say we use uh, say 50 all right now let's hit R and see the result so uh, this is 50 but we want it to be dynamic so as we shrink the screen make it smaller and smaller like that we want the distance to change but it's not changing so we need to pass here screen width okay so screen size screen size oh we need to access widget property screen size with say 50 all right that's what we want okay now this is much better you know as it as i hover over so as i enlarge it as you see the distance increases as I shrink it, the distance decreases. So it's based on mobile device and size, right? So this is perfect. Now, another thing here is a little weird is this. Uh, now, they don't have a, like top and bottom distance, like if you look at this icon. So I want to create a bit of space at the top and at the bottom. So what we could do, we could wrap it around padding widget, okay? With this one. And now instead of padding, const would do this one dot only okay now we do at top but once again just like this we'll do dynamic one so let us copy this well I guess we don't need to copy just write it quickly widget dot screen size dot height so for top we use screen size height and uh, so let's divide it by 45 and we'll do the same for bottom We'll do widget dot screen size dot height by 45 okay now let's hit r and see the result now it's looking much better a little bigger what well, and now this this one over here so it's too close to the left side so we can also create a left padding so let's go ahead and do it screen size dot uh, but for left padding would is with say 40 all right now let's hit r okay so i'm happy with this all right yeah so now let's enlarge it let's shrink it okay like this all right uh and another thing we could also do increase the padding a little bit between these two cards so to do that um we can wrap this card around padding okay around padding widget so once again we'll do this and we don't need const we just do add sets on only say do say bottom okay screen size size oh sorry the access the widget screen size dot height uh, so divide by 30 okay now let's hit R okay so that's what we have right now there's a little bit of distance but I think this distance is too much right so let's do 40 okay now it's uh, I think much better okay so now let's enlarge it so let's look at our top bar and let's shrink it so everything is shrinking so far everything is good and it hits 800 and it becomes like this so this is the overall look so far well now we want to take care of this thing so we don't really want to put these two words next to each other so we want to collapse them so this would sit on the top of this one so it should come there so that's why we need to head over to our file which is called uh, featured heading this one all right okay so over here and uh, well now here we have only this one row uh, and this row is showing this to all items or text over here. So once again, what we'll do, we'll uh, check the screen size. So we'll do screen size with uh, if it's 800, less than 800 or not. If it's less than 800, we'll show our widgets or stuffs in column. Otherwise, we'll fall back to row. All right. So that's what we are doing. Column. Right.
yes and uh, M N I guess okay now it does take children okay so now what would be our children our children would be this two text so we can just go ahead and simply copy them so this is the first one so we'll put it there and then we'll create a sized box uh, say height um, so five pixel like that okay and then we also copy this text over here all right uh, we'll put it there okay now we'll hit R okay now here we are so now everything is at the, at the at, in the middle so this should be okay or maybe not so uh, but from design perspective I think it should be over here somewhere okay so we need to push them to the left okay all right well uh, to do that we need to wrap this thing with other containers but it also has some of the default styles that we can use go ahead with cross axis alignment so we'll do cross axis uh, access alignment dot start and we'll hit R okay so now this works so on this axis so they're beginning from the start okay so now we need to find a way to push them to the left and to do that what we can do we can wrap this widget within another uh, I would say row widget okay so within row widget this would be our first item and next item would be empty container okay so what we do we'll just say uh, wrap it around a widget and we'll call it row but of course uh, for row uh, it takes children children so we'll, we'll move it inside okay yeah so uh, we can collapse this one uh, sorry we'll collapse this one okay so this is our row over here now okay so now let's hit R let's make sure yes so it's already here actually okay so at the beginning of this uh, section okay so because we used the row so things start from the beginning okay and uh, this part is like empty uh, of course you can also use empty container but I don't see the point because it's already took this uh, side and came to the left so we are good with this okay so next we'll see how to work on this thing so now they're pretty small what we'll do we will uh, just show one image at a time and then we'll be able to slide on the images okay this way it would look much better so we have this padding and this padding is showing the content over here this one so what we want to do we want to show this images in a row but we want to be able to scroll through them but also not as small as this images they are too small so we want our images to be this big okay this big and right after every image on the right there should be a little bit empty space just like this okay so those image and space we also put in a row image and space this empty space in one row all right so what we'll have first we'll have a big row a very big row within big row will contain everything and then we'll have small row and uh, those rows actually th then uh, we'll have small row okay and uh, those row will have this and this white section together like this okay all right and but this section will also have a column section because the image and this text they would show in one column and then we'll have this empty space so this column and this empty space they would be in a row all right okay so now let's go ahead and start coding so first we want to check the screen size okay if screen size dot width it's a less than 800 okay then we'll do something okay what we'll do we want to show a row all right that's what we want to do all right otherwise we'll show this padding widget of course this padding widget has everything like this over here now within row we'll have children 
okay but now we want to loop through it right we want to loop through let me collapse this one so we want to loop through these things okay and show all right so to do that now we can use our uh, traditional for loop or we can also use more like a for loop this one is more like a for loop version but this is a flutter version okay so as we already have this one here we'll use uh, uh, this thing okay yeah uh, so I'll copy these two lines and uh, put it over here so in our case we don't want to column we want to row and then I guess we need two of this otherwise it will show error right okay great now we have this row so what it will do it will go through it will generate a loop okay all right so this loop would run three times and then each time it will generate a row okay and within row we'll have column because this column is this section okay all right so now let's go ahead and call column but before that we do we need to have this children list okay so do column and now within column we'll have children right okay okay now within children we want to have a sized box we want to have sized box because we want to show the images in a sized box right okay but now we want the images size to be a little bit dynamic so what we do we'll assign height and width dynamically based on screen size okay so in a responsive web app, the screen size is very important. Actually, with this, you can do pretty much any kind of responsive layout. Okay, so we do width by 1.5. Okay, so whatever the screen width it is, okay, whatever the screen width it is, so height is like, say, uh, 1 of 2.5, okay? and uh, whatever the screen width is the width is for our case the image width would be so it's uh, like for example image width the screen width is this okay so this is half okay and this is 1.5 okay so image width would be like pretty much like this okay yeah okay now we also want to show the image in a another container as a child okay so this container is clip right okay we are doing this because we want to have a little bit border like this okay so we do border radius border radius okay dot circular say 5.0 all right and then we'll have another child because we want to show the image now okay so now the image are coming from our assets list so we'll write assets i so this assets is the list of images over here okay or this one and now these are the image titles that we would be able would be using soon okay all right so uh i think this is not i this is called page index right okay now well one thing we could do we could go ahead and hit r and we want to see a bit of result that what's happening here okay so now we have this thing uh things are showing but it's uh, a little bit weird and uh, also we need some other uh, uh styling here about padding okay now let's solve things one by one okay so another thing we want to do we want to show the text right okay below it so what we could do right below sized box we can do a padding okay because there should be a little bit of gap and then we show the text okay so you do padding now of course padding would take say edge insets only and once again would do top okay and we'll do a little bit dynamic so height by 70 okay so that's it now this is the padding and right after padding we want to show the text okay 
So what we could do actually here we can put the text as a child. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then we'll have this title say page index. Okay. So now let's go ahead and hit R. Okay. Well, our text is showing up. All right. Yeah. So what we did, we just put this uh, text inside a padding. So it created a top padding, a little bit of uh, padding over here, right? Okay, now we can style this thing. Okay, so we do say style, uh, text style, we do font size, say font size 16, and uh, font family, we do mont serac. And font weight would we'll do say font weight dot uh, this one 500 okay, let's hit R and see the result okay so font size is a little bit different okay all right now okay so obviously we have some problems right now so this images they should be much bigger but not like this now that's happening because in this case image okay so we can do it fit so you could do box fit dot cover. Now with this, it will be I guess uh, as 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 big as the image. Okay, yeah, like that. Yeah. Now we have another problem is uh, they are two attached to each other. Okay. So right after every image, we want to create a little bit of empty space. Okay. So now let's see where is our image. So our image and text is being shown in this column, right? Okay. So right after column, we want to create empty space. So we could do sized box and then we do width. All right, uh, say screen size dot width by say 15. All right, now let's hit R. Yeah, so th there is this space, right? So now it's working, but uh, scrolling is not working so now let's focus on scrolling now to be able to work on scrolling we need to wrap this row okay row around remember this is a big long row so we can wrap it around say another widget we'll call it single child scroll view okay so single child scroll view this one so when you wrap things around single child scroll view with that you'd be able to scroll okay let's see mm. well we are still not able to scroll uh, maybe we can set up other direction like say scroll direction okay access dot horizontal Yeah, as you can see now we can scroll because horizontally we can scroll right yeah perfect now uh, there's a bit of problem so it's too close to this text line over here so we can wrap this one around another widget okay so we'll call it padding widget and instead of const uh, we'll use uh, say top widget right uh, edge insets top Sorry, add inserts dot only top screen size dot height. So let's use 50. Okay, and hit R. Okay, now it's it's looking much better. Okay. Uh, now there's another problem. Like um, this uh, row is too close to just the left side. Okay, so we'd be able to. We need to say, for example, add a little bit of left padding okay somewhere here all right so or we can also add say I guess we can also add a sized box okay so before this loop okay so we can add a sized box over here all right sized box okay because the row doesn't really support uh, uh, 
row doesn't support actually having padding inside a row so here we can put a size box as a child okay and then we'll do width so width is more like the left padding okay so we'll do screen size dot uh, width and then we'll divide it by 15 okay okay now let's hit R yeah now it's much better okay so this sized box has helped it to give a padding but only once on the left side because uh, this is the child inside this one this row okay but this one runs in a loop three times okay so it, it just runs once all right so now with this we are pretty much done of this section okay now let's go ahead and enlarge it so this is our computer version uh, and uh, now this would be our mobile version okay yeah so everything is working perfectly right here we are good with this um, uh, layout for now and there are a few other small things that we can take care before we go ahead to the next section so this thing we want to align over here okay this this text as you see okay we want to align them over here okay uh, and now this belongs to a column so let's go ahead and find our column so over here we'll do cross axis alignment so cross axis axis alignment for column if we're in a column the cross axis alignment is horizontal okay so let's uh, uh, set it up alignment dot start okay so right now they're center so we set send it to start and then we should be good to go all right okay so now they're at the beginning okay and another uh, thing that I wanted to take care of is this color okay so this icon color now these are in over here okay we did it early and uh, if you go through your code you will find that this is in this loop okay for mobile version so now the uh, icons are in this card itself so find the icon okay over here right okay now over here we can set their color to do colors dot blue gray i think this one okay now let's hit r okay now it's looking much better they pretty much have the same color all right so the next thing we want to take care of is uh, this one okay we can also do this one like say change the text uh, because it's too little big but it's up to you now uh, on the mobile everything is working fine here so uh, on the mobile in general you wouldn't need this indicator so we'll just hide it okay to do that we need to find our carousel so let's go ahead and find carousel so this is our carousel okay and uh, let's see the carousel now let's collapse the code so that we have a better look so this few sections that we have okay so now this carousel uh, let's find where we have this thing mm, definitely let's see so these are this text so i guess this carousel indicators are over here all right yeah okay uh so it's over here so now this one is pretty simple we can use our current knowledge simple knowledge to hide it so simply what we will do we'll just uh, check the screen size okay let's find the screen size okay this is the screen size okay so screen screen size dot width if it's less than 800 we do something otherwise we do this one so if it's less than 800 we want to hide it but at the same time you need to have a widget okay we can put an empty widget so we could do container 
otherwise we show this aspect ratio now over here screen r i'm missing an r over here okay so what happens if it's less than 800 we will show a container otherwise on desktop version we'll go ahead with this text okay now let's hit r okay so yeah that's gone and as you see scrolling is still working so our website okay so the website is getting better and better so everything is working correctly okay uh, now let's uh, take a look at the desktop version so these are desktop version so these are back again once again they're back okay yeah all right so next we'll take care of this uh, bottom section to make it responsive on mobile phone then would be done and I'm pretty excited to finish this tutorial okay now we'll take care of our bottom bar and we want to make it responsive okay well if we want to do that uh, uh, that's pretty easy to do but before that we need to take care of some of the style issues here like color and things like that so now with the heading I want to go going to change the color all right so now that's uh, with uh, heading right and now also this uh, other text property first I don't want them to have this uh, font weight um, because I want to have them a little lighter so I'll remove them okay now let's hit R okay yeah now they're a little lighter and at the same time we want to change the color of this one okay so just we want to use blue gray color and let's uh, first see the result say for example this one uh, okay i guess we don't need this yeah or maybe we can use a different color so your color is still white like that okay yeah I think that that works so I'll go ahead and set up that one okay uh, for others the same and over here it's same okay great all right uh, and uh, let's see now this is our mobile uh, desktop version okay yeah yes it's working very fine uh, now actually we can also change this color over here this address and email like that okay so we need to go to our text info file which is this one and over here uh, I think uh, it's doing colors are white so we could uh, here do say for example blue colors dot blue gray and uh, 200 like that okay and over here we want uh, this one okay now let's hit R yes so now they're the same all right okay so we are being same everywhere and I'm, I'm happy with this because this text is pretty small all right okay now let's take care of this responsive thing okay now responsive thing we all have to deal with the, this file the main file is bottom bar this one okay so this is the file we want to deal with okay uh, well now things are pretty okay so far mm, everything is being shown from here for the footer okay and um, this is just a footer background color so we don't need to handle that issues oh, I mean dealing with this gradient color and decoration so we can leave it as it is so here the first thing we'll do once again we'll check the screen size let's see do we have a screen size over here well we don't have screen size so what we could do we can just call um, media query dot off con well context and then that size dot width so this is how we can also get the width and then we get 800 okay all right so if it's less than 800 we'll have a column Okay, otherwise we'll show this old column okay and uh, now I'm doing column because uh, on the mobile the first thing I want to put this thing at first and then this one at the second 
and this uh, this one at the third and this is at last okay so that's what I want to do so I need a column okay so if we have column then we can put things on the top of each other okay so definitely column will have children right okay now make sure that everything is fine so hit R yeah so bottom is gone right okay so now uh, let's go ahead and copy some of the things from here we don't need to rewrite it okay so we can what we could do we can just copy this row section do remember this row is uh, showing those about uh, contact as those things okay so just let's copy paste and put it there and hit R all right uh, let's see I think we might also have some unnecessary thing like this one we don't want them yes good and we also don't need this one now yes perfect so it worked pretty smooth right so what we did we took this uh, children here and put them in a row okay and that's how it works so that's pretty simple right so this is the first child in our column now next we want to put a divider so just simply call divider okay yes and uh, let's see if we are happy with the default divider size and color uh, look like we need to set up the color okay so do colors dot white mm, okay I think that we are happy with this and uh, next we want to put our email address and addresses things like that okay so these are over here these are over here in a column so what we could do we can just simply copy this one and let's see what happens so these are already in column so I'll just put it there okay now let's collapse it let's see yes perfect so it's already pretty much everything is there right so so far yeah everything is there all right and the last thing so uh, sorry no the last thing we also need a divider here once again so we can copy paste it okay and we'll hit R to make sure yes we have this thing all right uh, but now I think they're pretty close to each other so I want to make a distance between these two so I will do sized box say height 10 and uh, I will do the same below the column so height 10 okay now let's hit R Mm, okay, so now it's more spacious, I guess. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see. Now we have this uh, column section over here, this one. Okay, so uh, we can just copy paste this one with this sized box at the same time. Okay. So let's just put it right there. Okay, now let's hit R. Okay, perfect. So this is our column, uh, footer column on mobile, and this is still good, 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 good. Let's see, yes, now this is the mobile uh, desktop version or iPad version. Okay, perfect. So let's see, yes. So we are done with this. Okay, uh, but now the last thing I want to do over here, this uh, auto sliding, I want to put it back because I remember we uh, stopped this feature because it was a bit annoying. So this carousel slider auto play, we'll put it to true. Okay, hit R. So this way our website is complete. Okay, perfect. All right, so, well, this is the end of our tutorial. Hopefully you liked it, you learned things, and if you have questions, you can leave a comment below. And once again, if you liked it, if you learned something, don't forget to smash that like button, 
and uh, share it with your friends thank you so much for watching thanks thanks for being so patient for this little over two hours it's been a long journey see you soon